Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to Geometry, Chapter 6, Section 5, in this book. And this time we're going to be talking about trapezoids and kites. So, this is just like, you know, kindergarten, learning your shapes. Okay, so what a trapezoid is, is it's got two parallel lines that are not the same size. You got a big one and a little one. And then you got the, the things that connect them, and they're called the legs. The parallel sides are called the base, because you could have the big one on the bottom, or you could have the little one on the bottom. They're both called bases, okay? It is called an isosceles trapezoids if its legs are congruent. So if they're the same, they don't have to be to be a trapezoid, but to be an isosceles, remember iso means same, so to be an isosceles trapezoid, the legs have to be congruent. The bases will never be congruent, but the legs have to be congruent. Now, so here's a theorem. Um, if a trapezoid is isosceles, then the base angles are congruent. So that means if these are the same, then these two angles will be the same and those two angles will be the same of each other. Uh, like these two are the same, but they're not the same as those because then that wouldn't be in uh, trapezoid anymore. Also, if the base angles are congruent, then you know it is an isosceles triangle. So if you're not sure if it's isosceles, but these angles are congruent, you know it is. Then you know that the two legs are the same. All right, so here's a problem. We've got a trapezoid. We've got the parallel lines, and this one is isosceles. See how the, the marks are on there? The legs are the same. And we are given that that angle is 50. So what would be, um, we want to know the ang what angle P is, Q, and R. Well, we can know R because it's also, oh, that doesn't write good. It's also 50 because remember, the angles are the same. So R is 50. Now, but what about these? Here's our clue. Remember, for any quadrilateral, all four sides equal 360. So 50 and 50 is 100. 100 minus 360 is 260. 260 divided by 2 is 130. So those have to be 130, if I did my math in my head right, for them all to add up to be 360. All right, here's a trapezoid, and here's another theorem. It says a trapezoid is isosceles if and only if diagonals are congruent. So if AC is, a, is congruent to DB, if those are the same, then it is an isosceles trapezoid. Now you can have trapezoid without an isosceles, but for it to be isosceles, diagonals are congruent. Okay, so here is a new idea. It's called the mid-segment of a trapezoid, and it is if you take one leg and cut it in half and put a dot, and you take the other leg and cut it in half and put a dot, and you draw a line between those two dots, you will have drawn the mid-segment. It's halfway, it's parallel to both bases, see how I drew the little blue arrow on it? And if you add up the two lengths and divide by two, you get the lengths of the mid-segment. It's like an average. So it's half of the sum of the bases. It's an average. So if this one's eight and that one's 20, you would add them together and get 28 divided by two, our mid-segment would be 14. Now your book does this as a word problem. It says you are a baker and you want to make a three-layered cake. And the base of the top one is going to be eight and the base of the bottom one is going to be 20. What should the base of the middle one be? And you do the problem and you figure out it's 14. But no baker has ever done this problem. Unless you are a blacksmith or, or pot maker also, you don't sit there and do that math. You just buy the ones that come together for the set. I've been to the baker shop. I know how it goes. You don't sit there and do math before you do this trying to figure it out. I don't think. Maybe if some of you are bakers, you can correct me. But... I've just always seen where you just get the right pans and do it. But I'm 
I'm a bit, I don't make like wedding cake stuff. I might make, you know, easy stuff like peach cobbler, but not wedding cakes. All right. Uh, there's another shape called kite, and it is the shape of a kite, the kite that flies in the sky. It's got the top, it's got two sides that are the same that are short, and two sides that are the same that are long. So it's that shape. It's a quadrilateral as a kite, and we will know it as a kite. Um, and when it is a kite, diagonals are perpendicular. So see, here's my kite. I drew it. I drew the diagonals, and they look how good I did. I made it a right angle. I sort of surprised myself with my drawing there. Okay. And you can have a problem with this. Like in the book, it's got where it says that this side, this side, and this side are all 12, and that one's 20. And they wanted you to find the length of the outside sides. Well, if you look at it, each one of these is a right triangle because they are perpendicular. So you can use Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared is c squared, and you can solve for these missing sides. You see how they're each right triangles? Now, I have Pythagorean theorem as a program on my graphing calculator. I think you should get it too. Uh, so, and I have actually two. One finds the hypotenuse, and my other one finds the legs. So you need to, I would get that if I were you. All right, so here's another theorem about kites. Um, a quadrilateral is a kite if one pair of opposite angles are congruent. So here's a kite, and these two across from each other will be the same. So like this angle is 132, that one's 60, but these two are the same. Well, what are those two? Can we figure it out? Yes, we can, because all four angles of a quadrilateral are 360. So we know 132 plus 60 plus x plus x, which is 2x, equals 360. 132 and 60 is 192. Subtract 192 from both sides, and you get 2x equals 168. Divide both sides by 2, and x is 84. So be sure you understand that algebra too. If not, go back and review your algebra, okay? I think this is fun. Hope you did too. Uh, math is great.